Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys, and welcome back to r slash malicious compliance. For in today's episode, a Karen pretends to be an office manager and it backfires so hard. You're gonna love it. I hope you enjoy the lineup of stories today because they're super duper satisfying. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so this happened a few years ago when I was first starting in hospitality, but this was the best intro I ever got to what hospitality is really like. So on this day, it was the afternoon, and my boss was already in a cranky mood because he was teaching a 17-year-old how to use the coffee machine, which would drive anyone mad. A woman came in and she orders a dine-in coffee extra hot. He let me do the coffee while he went out back and I made the milk to 75 degrees celsius. For those who don't know, milk is steamed to around 65 degrees celsius, which is 149 fahrenheit. So this should have been fine. She then comes back and says, I asked for extra hot and this is lukewarm at best. Now I'm brand new at this so my boss assumes that I've made a mistake. So I remake the coffee showing him that it's now 80 degrees celsius, 176 fahrenheit. He tried a bit by pouring the milk into a separate cup, burnt his mouth and confirmed the thermometer was fine. I took it out to her, said sorry and came back to a life lesson from my boss saying that customers can sometimes tell when someone's new so they prey on them. So again the woman comes back and she says, I come here all the time and I've never been so disappointed. She then storms back to her table. My boss and I are really confused at this point and he remakes it again. She brings it back again and begins to yell at me full Karen style. My boss has gone to the toilet at this point. So I'm 17 years old, brand new to this customer facing job and I'm trembling and almost crying. At this point my boss has had enough. He walks up, yanks the cup from her hand and puts it under the steam wand and turns it on. The milk is now boiling over the cup, all over the countertop and onto the floor and my boss just stares at her, hard. He then hands it back to her without even breaking eye contact. The milk is curdled, half a cup of liquid is missing, and he says, There, it's hot. I made sure of it. The Karen was mortified and I was horrified. She sat at her table too stunned to complain and drank the coffee in peace. He then goes back into the kitchen to tell the chef and they cracked up laughing. That boss was the best and worst boss that I've ever had. Guys, I love how OP's boss finally had enough and dealt with that complaining Karen, and how she just took it and sat there quietly drinking her curdled milk coffee. Like, I don't even think it was about temperature at that point. I feel like she was someone who was preying on a new employee, and she just wanted the new employee to be wrong to get a free coffee. Like, am I reaching, or is that absolutely possible? This is my tiny malicious compliance story, which happened in my first year of university, about 8 years ago, when I was 20 years old. The bus I had to take to university was the most popular route in town, meaning it was always packed. Now because I got on at the first stop, I always had a window seat, which meant that someone was usually sitting next to me when I had to get off. That's not a problem usually, just a bit awkward for socially awkward me. One morning, a guy in his 40s sat next to me and promptly spread his legs to the point that they reached across my seat, pushing his leg right up to mine. I thought it was weird, but hey, maybe this guy had a painfully swollen scrotum or no self-awareness, or both. Anyway, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt, and as he was focused on his phone and ignored me, I did the same for the rest of the journey. Then, when we were getting close to my stop, I start the awkward, I have to get off, so let me pass show, by grabbing my backpack, putting it on my lap, and straightening up. There was no reaction, so I stood up from my seat, and there was still no reaction. At this point I say, Sir? There was no reaction, so I tapped his shoulder, and I say again, Sir, I need to get off. Can can you let me pass? That's when the guy looked up at me and with the widest, most disgusting grin said, Well, sweetie, it looks like you're gonna have to squeeze past me, but that's no problem for such a skinny girl, right? Now, some of the passengers standing around us noticed and they were about to intervene, but I was pissed at that point because I had missed my stop, and I wasn't sure if he was just a pervert or he liked to piss on people's days, but I did not want him to win. So I smiled at him and said, Okay, have it your way. My backpack was filled with half a dozen library books that I was going to return that day, and it was bulky and pretty heavy. Now usually, I would have put it on after leaving the crowded bus, but not that day. I shouldered my backpack so it was hanging at the right height and I clumsily and forcefully 
and in no way sexily squeeze past that guy, dragging my huge backpack across his face. Now, I also leaned back to make sure to really get his nose, and if he emitted any pain-filled protests, well, they must have been muffled by my backpack. As I was standing by the door waiting for the next stop, I looked to see him covering his nose with his hand. It looked like he was checking to see if it was bleeding, but I don't think he did. He might have had a scratch or two from my backpack, but he wasn't injured or anything. But his pride was, though. He kept glaring at me for the glorious half minute it took for the bus to reach the next stop. I was in such a good mood that I didn't mind walking back to where I was supposed to get off. Guys, honestly, when I read this, I thought she was going to accidentally drop her book bag on his crotch or something. But hey, a book bag to the face is pretty good too. And seriously, I can't help but to think how often he does this. Like, what a freaking creep, right? Okay, so this malicious compliance comes from my time working at a bank in their contact center. I literally have hundreds of stories about that place and its customers, but today I'd like to share a story that's always brought a smile to many suffering customer service coworkers' faces about the time we got one back for the good guys. Okay, so a little backstory. I was employed as a customer service officer. I'd been with a bank for about 18 months at this point, mostly working afternoon shifts. But recently, the bank had moved to a 24-hour customer service model. So while most of the bank would be closed, we were still open. So let me set the scene. On this day, it was 10 p.m., midweek, fluorescent lights were flickering overhead, the call board was empty, and I'm literally counting the seconds left in my shift, ready to go home. And then a phone call pops on my screen. And I'm thinking, crap, always get a phone call before I finish. So I'm mustering my best customer service voice and I say, Hello there, thank you for calling the bank, you're speaking with so and so. How can I help you? Now I hear nothing but dead air, so I start to repeat myself saying, Hi, you're speaking with... When out of nowhere, I hear the tone of voice and words that every contact center has heard at some point. It just lets you know that you're in for a great call. The customer lets out a loud sigh and says, Yes, I'm here. God, what takes you people so long to answer? Like, what are you doing? Now, as noted before, there were no calls on the board, and this customer did not wait in a queue. He would have dialed, gone through to the IVR to enter his customer number and PIN before being put through to me. Max, 60 seconds. Now me, trying not to provoke any further and get this customer off the phone as quickly as I can so I can go home, says, Oh, I'm sorry about that. Our system doesn't show a queue, but I'm sorry you had to wait. What can I do for you this evening? Hearing that, the customer seems to settle down, and he starts explaining that the reason for the call was the interest charges on the most recent credit card bill. He was sure it was a mistake because, quote, I always pay my bills on time, and I don't like paying you bloodsuckers any more than I have to. Charming, I know. So I place him on hold to look at his account. I start looking at the payment history, when the payments were due, received, what the balances were, etc. Then I quickly looked at the customer's interaction notes. This is where the bank records any contact with the customer, as well as any fee waivers, special interest rates, etc. And I see a very interesting series of notes from colleagues of mine, stating things like, Customer says interest was charged due to full payment not received by due date. Customer then threatened to close all accounts with the bank. Manager approved interest waiver. Now, notes like this went on for months, until there was a note from the head of customer relations and retention stating, quote, If customer threatens to close accounts to seek waiver of fees, interest, or other charges, please process immediately. No retention authorized. Now I was a bit shocked because usually the bank would do a lot to keep existing customers, like they told us in training. They told us it's cheaper to keep a customer than it is to gain a new one. So I call my night manager to read the notes and to give him a heads up that I've got a feeling that the customer is going to be demanding another interest waiver. My cool night manager says, well, if he does, do what the note says. Total hold time was maybe two minutes. I take the customer off hold and thank him for waiting. The customer then says, it's about damn time. My time is very valuable, you know. So have you fixed it yet? Now I start explaining that the interest charges are valid because he didn't pay off his balance before the due date. And hearing this, he goes ballistic. The guy starts calling me every conceivable name under the sun. And mid-sentence, he stops, plays it like he's just had an idea and says, Fine, 
if the interest charges are valid, I'm going to close my account. I want to close my account with you right now. You're going to lose a long time customer, you know. At this point, I'm excited about putting him in his place, but I also want to cover myself. So I ask, sir, so just to be certain, you're instructing me to close all of your accounts with us, including your credit card, savings account, and transactional account? He then replies, are you stupid? That's what I said. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. At this point, I am grinning my ass off, and I say, okay, no problem. I'll just put you on hold to do that for you. I hit the hold button fast, just as I heard him say, no, I mean... So with my night manager's help, we close his account. His savings account was a term deposit, so by breaking the term early, he had to pay an early access fee of 10% of the balance. We then used the money in his transactional account to cover the outstanding balance in his credit card, and then sent a request for a check to be issued for the remaining money. I then take the customer off hold and say, again, thank you for your patience, sir. As requested, your accounts are now closed. Was there anything else I can help you with tonight? Now, if you thought the customer went ballistic before, oh boy. There was talk of suing the bank, suing me, suing my night manager, suing the head of customer relations and retentions, suing everybody involved in what happened. He also accused us of discrimination, that I didn't have the authority to do what I did, and he's gonna call police to get us all arrested because we are thieves. He then tells me how useless I am and how I can just go off and kill myself. You get the picture. Now I'm still smiling because I know that nobody will have to deal with him again, say, Sir, I understand you're upset. However, on a recorded phone call, you instructed me to close your accounts, and I've complied with your wishes. As there's nothing else for us to speak about tonight, I will now end the call. Thank you for calling the bank, and have a good night. I then hung up on him before he could say another word. My night manager creates an incident report and sent it to the head of customer relations and retentions, with an attached copy of the call recording. I later found out that head of customer relations and retentions sent the customer a letter telling him that he was banned from our bank for life due to the vile and disgusting way he had spoken to me. That we would never do business with him ever again and if he called or visited a branch, we would be the ones calling the police. Now, do you want to know what the total interest charges were that started all this? $30. His term deposit had $20,000 in it, and he cost himself $2,000 in early exit fees because he thought he could bully his way out of $30 in interest. Guys, what sweet justice and a prime example of a-hole tax, guys. Best punishment ever, especially with the check being issued for the remainder of the ballots. This story happened 16 years ago. When I was about 20 years old, I was department manager in a big box hardware store. People say I acted 25, but I didn't even look 18. As a young female, I saw my fair amount of discrimination, but the worst always came from women. This is the story of one such woman. I managed the paint department. I had three associates who worked for me. They loved me as a boss because I bought them a radio and took the shifts they didn't want. I usually worked Friday close and Saturday mid so my two younger guys could have time to have fun on Friday nights, and the older gentlemen took early Saturday mornings, so they could sleep off their fun. In trade, I gave the older gentleman his ideal schedule. My team was awesome. So one day, I was in the department alone, and a lady comes up and asked me where she could find the 5-gallon oil-based primer. I let her know that my location didn't carry the 5-gallon size of that primer. She told me that we did, and said that it was shelved right there while suggesting that I was too stupid to remember, while her husband gave me an apologetic look. I let her know that another location had what she was looking for, and that it was in fact in that exact location, in that store. She let me know how stupid she thought I was for thinking she could mix up stores. She then began yelling and loudly insisting that I get a man to help her, because she wants someone who's competent and not a stupid little girl. Her husband actually tried to step in at that point, but I just smiled and let her know that a male paint associate would be clocking in any minute, and that I would be happy to direct him to her as soon as he's on the clock. I smiled and waited for Joe to clock in. Joe was great, and I knew he could handle this or I wouldn't have put him in this situation, but Joe was also new. He was learning things super quick, but still relied on the rest of us for help. When I see Joe walk up, I quickly said that there was a customer who needed help. I let him know that she was upset, and asked him to do his best to answer her questions. So Joe walks up to the lady, and she says, Finally! A man! 
She then asked her question, explained where the product should be, and waited. Joe calmly let her know that he had never seen us carry that product in a 5 gallon, but that he could check with the paint department manager. She was happy, and loudly said she was happy to be getting some real help. Now that's when Joe walked right up to me, and he starts to ask me about the 5 gallon oil based primers. The lady quickly walks up and asked him what he was doing. He then turned to her and said, This is my manager, she runs the department. The husband laughs out loud, the woman storms off, and I bought Joe lunch. Oh, I wish I could have been there to see the Karen's head explode at that point, guys. A female manager of a hardware store? Are you kidding me? I love how the husband just laughs out loud. I was working at a company that despite being a multinational, had a very small staff due to its nature. It was a very specialized medical field. Now this, plus the constant staff absences from the office, due to site and field trips meant that everyone at all degrees of seniority came and went from the head office, and mucked in and did whatever needed doing whenever they were there. Eventually, however, it came to the point of needing a dedicated office person for answering the phone, data entry, filing, etc. So the specialist could focus more on the medical work, and a girl was hired. I was away consulting on a site setup when she started, and this is what happened when I came back and met her. So on this day, I got back in the morning, and I wasn't planning on working immediately after such a long trip. Instead, I was planning on picking up my 5-year-old nephew from school and going to the park with him. We were going to drop off some papers and a case full of medical equipment at the office along the way. So I arrive at the office wearing jeans with a child in tow. This is fairly unremarkable. Our job schedule is non-standard, and to accommodate this, the drop-ins at all hours, in various states, sometimes casual dress, are frequent. I see the new girl that was hired, and immediately try to introduce myself. I walk up to her and say, Hi, you must be so-and-so. I am... She then cuts me off and says, What do you want? I tell her, I'm just dropping off the equipment case and some paperwork. The girl doesn't bother to reply, she just shrugs towards the back where the case goes. I put the papers on the edge of the desk in order to wrangle the case into the cupboard. She then screams at me and says, Don't put them there! They don't belong there! What are you doing? And that's when I asked her, Where would you like them? She replies, where would I like them? They're nothing to do with me. Just get them out of my way. Now at this point, I take a deep breath. I remember that she has no way of knowing who I am or my role with the company. I then say to her, actually, these need to be entered in the computer. So should I just hand them to you or do you have an in-tray? And that's when the Karen says, how about you do your work and stop trying to pass it on to me? And that child shouldn't be here. She then points at my nephew, who's been in the office many times, and he looks startled at this, and he's a bit upset. I tell her, I understood you were taking over in the office, and that's when she cuts me off again and says, that's right, and as the manager, I need to tell you that in the future, you need to dress appropriately and do the work you're given. This is unacceptable. I then take another deep breath. I try to muster sympathy as she's new and possibly hasn't realized that the jeans and the child aren't at a line for a quick drop off. I summon a smile for a final attempt at making the encounter more pleasant. I say to her, you know, I've never finished introducing myself, I'm... She then points at my nephew and says, don't touch anything. Just because your mother lets you away with coming in here doesn't mean I will put up with it. My nephew's now confused and distraught at the attack and he bursts into tears. Me suddenly not giving a damn if she's new and losing all sympathy and my smile say, no, 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 I don't think so. And that's when Karen says, if you don't like it, you can take it up with the CEO. I'm a close personal friend of his as well as the manager here and he's happy for me to run the office as I see fit. Now I'm thinking, take it up with the CEO, she says, malicious compliance time. Now I know he'll be in shortly, so I decide to wait and do just that. Soon, he comes in the door, and my nephew says, Daddy! He then runs over and gets hugs. The CEO then looks to me and says, Oh great, you're back. Have you met her yet? He then looks to the girl and says, Cindy, this is Dr. So-and-so. She's my business partner and my sister. Now you should have seen the look on her face. He then takes the papers off me and hands them to her. He then looks closer at his son and says, What's wrong, kiddo? Are you crying? Now, we didn't fire her. She just didn't show up the next day. I don't know what happened to her after that, and she never contacted us for a reference. 
Oh my freaking goodness, guys. Like, I can feel the embarrassment for this woman. Like, what would you even do in that situation? Like, the only thing you can do is do what this Karen did, and that's to ghost and never come back again. I guess you could say she fired herself, since she was the manager, right? And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash malicious compliance. Guys, I hope you enjoyed these super satisfying stories today, because I sure as heck did. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, I'll link it right here. OP's Karen parents demand his house, because how dare our child have a better house than us? The police get involved, the story is crazy, so go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.